good morning. Thank you for coming. Uh, as you can see, Dr. Lorenz isn't here, and neither are most of your class, so it's just going to be you today. So uh, be sure to take notes. My name is Walter Harper, and me and a few of my budding biologist colleagues are going to be talking about photosynthesis and not only what it does, but how it's done. Uh, just a little bit of intro to photosynthesis. 99.9% uh, .9 of life on Earth uh, requires photosynthesis to survive and to get its energy and nutrients. Uh, life on Earth is divided up into two categories, heterotrophs and autotrophs. Uh, heterotrophs are animals, autotrophs are plants, and uh, heterotrophs actually eat autotrophs, like you doing so rudely in my class. Anyways, uh, plants contain chloroplasts. That actually is what gives them their green color. Uh, chloroplasts reflect green light, and there's about a half a million chloroplasts on a leaf in a plant. Uh, continued, uh, there's actually an equation that uh, scientists have found out for uh, the process of photosynthesis. It involves carbon dioxide, water, and light uh, reacting together to produce sugar, oxygen, and water again. Like I said earlier, the green parts of plants contain chloroplasts, and from these chloroplasts are produced organic compounds, uh, oxygen from light, CO2, and H2O. How energy is derived from light? An electron starts in a low energy field. Uh, when a chloroplast absorbs light, the electrons get excited and actually move to a higher energy field. After they move to this high energy field, when they fall back down to the low original energy field, energy is produced. That's how plants derive energy from sunlight. To continue on this, I'm going to bring up my colleague, Alex Miller, to further talk about the process of photosynthesis. Mr. Miller? Thank you, Mr. Harper. Hello, everybody. I'm um, Alex Miller. So, um, this is a light-dependent reaction. A light-dependent reaction is a reaction that depends on light. The location is the thylakoid membrane, which is in the chloroplast. Um, ATP and ADPH are made, then they enter the stroma for the light-independent reaction. Over here is ATP, and right here is NADPH. Photosystems. There are three components of photosystems. The first one is the light harvesting antenna complex. This is where light is absorbed. The second one is the reaction center, which is an enzyme that uses light to reduce molecules. The third is the electron transport system. Chlorophyll, proteins, and organic molecules are organized in photosystems. And this picture shows the processes of photosystems. Now, to further this lecture, I will bring in my colleague, um, Art Lupondo. Thank you, Mr. Miller. What are you doing? Pay attention, please. Thank you. Continuing on the subject of photosystems, we have, we're going to begin with photosystem 2. Now, photosystem 2 uh, generates these ATP from these ADP molecules. And we have, after photosystem 2, we have ATP synthesis. Now, ATP synthesis comes in between Photosystem 2 and photosystem 1. And during this ATP synthesis, electrons go across the electron transport chain and release energy. Now, after ATP synthesis, we move on to photosystem 1. And in photosystem 1, we have NADPH that is generated from NADP molecules. And again, this is all happening from sunlight. Continuing this lecture is my colleague, Sarah Rudin. Thank you, Art. light-independent reactions. They're called light-independent reactions because they do not need light to actually work. And they're also known as dark reactions. They use ATP and NAD, NADPH from the light reactions to make organic molecules. 
This happens in the stroma, and once um, the ATP and NADPH are used in the reaction, ATP is changed back into ADP, and NADPH is changed back to NADP+. Um, once um, used in the light reactions again, they change back, and so it's just a cycle that continues. To relate back to oxidation reduction reaction, as we know, Leo is oxidation, which is lose an electron, and then GER is reduction, which is gain an electron. Um, looking back at the equation for photosynthesis, we can see the water in the beginning loses an electron, which means it's oxidized, and the sugar, which is the C6H12O6, gains an electron, therefore it's reduced, and that's how it's related back to photosynthesis. And so we all know that Leo says GER. Thank you.